I've been magnet fishing for a couple years now, and I've used some traditional rigs, but I've never seen anything like this, and I wanted to come up with something that I thought would work better and be more effective. Super Magnet Fishing Rig 2.0. I'll post up there and down below where we actually tested this out, and then I'll break down for you every aspect of the design and things that I'm gonna improve on before I go magnet fishing again. Interested? Here we go. So I'm going to kind of walk through all the different design trade-offs and thoughts here. Now that I've used this thing for a while, the clearance is quarter of an inch. It's just enough not to get hung up and drag on the bottom. If you have an uneven surface, yeah, it might bounce around a little bit. But the whole idea was to keep the magnet fully engaged. When you're dragging a magnet with a regular rig, it's kind of going like this. Or maybe if you're lucky, going like this. And there's still a significant angle. But with this rig, it's always sitting on the bottom because of this flexible joint here. I used 200 pound boating rope, even though I have a 300 pound force magnet, it might be a little more than that. First of all, when you are going outside magnet fishing, you want to make sure that you check your rope every time. Because as you can see, there's some little frays here, so I could probably go to the other end where it's a little tighter and go with that. You can also see that I have a stopper knot. That's so as, as I'm running my hand, I don't let go of the rope. And if I can't tie it off on a rail or something, I'll just kind of throw it around my ankle so that I don't lose the rope in the whole setup. Now what I'm considering is doing a different kind of rope. Now here you've got 500 pound certified paracord. It's kind of hard to hold on to just because of the size. But if you have some thick rubber gloves, then I think you're okay. Here's some old climbing line that I would use it's not good enough to climb on anymore, but it would certainly be good for this. And the great thing about it, it's called dry rope, so it's coated. It's got a little bit of flex to it. As far as a magnet fishing rope, it's great. See, I have a bowline knot here, and it's rather small, and I've looped it around a couple things. I made sure that it wasn't sharp, and then if you were worried about this knot coming out, now a bowline knot's pretty secure under all conditions, even though it's easy to take off, but you could always use a cable tie right here to kind of cinch it down. So let's take this guy apart and see what we've got. First thing I'll do is take the rope off. Zooming in a little bit here, there's a series of washers both on the inside and the outside, and I have a nylon lock nut. This is a 3 8 inch bolt. I maybe would go up with a slightly longer bolt and cut it off because you want a couple threads showing. Now you could also do permalock here on the lock nut. We're just kind of going to explode the view here. So we got a washer on this side. Now let's talk a little bit about the wheels. These are actually training wheels for bicycles where the tread on them brings it up a little too high as well as it could to the bottom. You wouldn't have to do this. You could go with the training wheels and it will be just up a little bit more and that may work for you. But I wanted to get this down as close as I could to optimize the chance of snagging something. When I took the tread off, I noticed there were two lines here. I didn't want that to dig in, so I actually used belts for a Hoover vacuum cleaner. I'll post below. And I just slid those on. And then on the other side, I had two washers. And so I wanted to minimize the amount of space between the magnet and the wheels. An eighth of an inch, a couple millimeters, two washers here. This is just a half inch pipe with shark bite inside, and that's just working as a spacer. So let's slide the magnet off, and you just have the same thing on this side, except for you have a bolt head. You got that there. So then you have this. So this is the magic pivot point for the design. It's an aluminum ruler for two reasons. One, because aluminum rulers are cheaper than the stock aluminum bar, the other thing is, is, sometimes you can use the measurements to make sure that you get the distance right. So it's right around the five inch piece because it's two and a quarter to here to the edge. And there's a little bit of a wrap. You can kind of see what the loop looks like. And then I just drilled a hole to fit the three eighth inch bolt through. So I think that's a three eighth inch hole. You can do the hole before or after, but you want to make sure it's even on both sides. And when I cut this out, I just used a coping saw and then just sanded it down to make sure there was no rough edges. And then another spacer. <laughs> and here I was just trying to get just enough to fit in this little void here to keep it from bouncing up and down. You know, people will have lots of problems with the magnet coming off of this piece here of the circle. 
So you want to make sure you use the permalock. See, that's a super magnet. It's pretty super. To measure this, I'm going to use the aluminum ruler. It's 295 inches, around 75 millimeters. So I'll show you how big the wheels are. They're at right around 10 millimeters. And sometimes you get the training wheels just from somebody that's throwing them away. If you buy them in the store, they're a couple ten bucks. Or just shy of four inches on the wheel without the tread. So here's the assembly. It's just this quick. Outer washer, these two washers, a washer here with the plastic spacer. Put this guy back in place. Put this little pivot point on. Line everything up. Run it through. And you want it just tight enough so it's not a factor. So you can see that once I put this wheel on, threads are only hitting this one wheel. And if for some reason this wheel started wearing out because of the threads, you could just rotate the wheels. And I hand tighten it down. You want to make sure that there's not a lot of friction here. You can see there's a tad bit of grinding. So what you could do here is you could actually shave this down. But I wanted enough strength that this aluminum piece wouldn't go out. And it's double strength, well over the strength of the super magnet. So this piece won't fail. So a little added protection around this metal piece, although I've never had a problem with it. I'm taking some half inch outer diameter, 3 8 inch inner diameter. Now this would depend on how big this is, plus how big your rope is, that distance there, which is 3 8 of an inch. Put it in here, slide it down, center it, and this piece here is 2 and a half inches. Now I'm going to take a little window out of here. So I'll put my rope through here. If the end's giving up on you a little bit, just hit that with a little bit of heat. See, and that will help it bend just a bit. Then I'm going to tie my bowline knot. Now you can see it's a little all the metal away from the super magnet. Okay, bowline knot is pretty simple. You just make the hole for the rabbit, run the rabbit through out of the hole, around the tree, and into the hole. Just like that. You just want to kind of feed it through here and try to get as little a tail as possible. Take an 8 inch cable tie, maybe two. That's a, about a 50 pound strength on that. Tighten those up, so that way the knot's gonna, not going to undo itself. With a cable tie cutter, if you're worried about this, you can always sand that down. And there is your new and improved rig. So the magnet's always where it needs to be for optimum coverage both on the ground as you run it down, but also as you lift things out. Boom. Trapped it right there. And then you can just bring it right up. So there you go. A new design approach to something that people have been doing for quite a while. I really think this could be a trendsetter. And I'd be very curious to hear what you think in the comments below. If you like designs of all kinds, evaluations of sports gear, making and breaking things, home repairs. I even do costumes, cosplay, and props. Check out my channel and please subscribe because you never know what you're gonna see.